As educators, the Parent-Teacher Conference is our greatest communication tool. Conferencing, more than any other means of communication, is an invaluable opportunity to foster trusting relationships and build true partnerships between the families and schools. However, little time is spent in teacher education and professional development to help teachers learn how to conduct a conference and how to make the most of conferencing opportunities. Because TUSD recognizes the importance of meaningful, effective conferencing to the overall success of students, the district has created this professional development opportunity to provide guidance to teachers in effective conferencing protocols. This training will help you to better understand how to use parent-teacher conferences as an opportunity to build partnerships with parents, how to facilitate two-way conversations during parent-teacher conferences in order to learn from families, and best practices for successful parent-teacher conferences. As you work your way through this module, keep in mind the value of parent-teacher conferences to the success of your students. Conferences facilitate critical home-to-school and school-to-home communication and family involvement in your school. They help you build positive working relationships with your students' families. Students whose families are involved in their learning earn better grades, enroll in higher level programs, have higher graduation rates, and are more likely to enroll in post-secondary education. And parent-teacher conferences provide some of the most meaningful opportunities for teachers to learn from families. Before we get started, let's take a moment to reflect on your past experiences in parent-teacher conferences. What factors contributed to your most successful conference? What were some of the challenges? Do your students parents or guardians view themselves as equal partners in their child's education? If so, how? If not, why? Now let's think about conferences from the parents' perspective. Here is what some parents had to say about their conferencing experience. A great parent-teacher conference, for me, is when there is a back and forth to the conversation, when, as a parent, you are able to give and you know the teacher has taken in what you offer. And then when you come back to the next conference and they can show you how they've acted on it. My daughter's teacher talks about her socially and I appreciate that. Not just the academic, but the whole child. Looking at all the elements of a child and being able to speak to all of them. I think it's all equally important. I appreciate being able to walk away with something that my child needs to work on. I do appreciate how the administration at my daughter's school charges the staff with the responsibility of being available for quarterly parent-teacher conferences. However, I do feel that there are some inconsistencies in how well prepared all staff are thoroughly explaining students' progress as well as areas which need improvement. As you can see, parents appreciate when teachers are well prepared and provide opportunities for two-way conversation. When teachers talk about their child as a person, not just as a student, parents feel that the teacher truly knows and cares about their child. Parents want their children to succeed. They want to know how they can support their children as students, so they appreciate concrete information, tools, and strategies for what they can do to help at home. When teachers make the family feel comfortable and help them to know that their input is needed and valuable, it paves the way for meaningful two-way conversation. We as educators do a great job of using conferencing to provide information to parents. It is our challenge to create a true two-way conversation where we, as educators, facilitate opportunities for parents to provide information as well, so we can learn from them. We can do this by making parents feel comfortable and welcome, helping them to understand through our words and actions that their input is valuable, by framing the conversation to provide parents with opportunities to share their ideas and perspectives, and by being receptive to their input. Let's take a look at some information and tips about what you can do before, during, and after to make the most of your conferences. The school as a whole can take action to prepare for conferences long before they take place. School site leadership will determine the structure for conferencing that will work best for their families. The culture of the school and needs of the families as well as student, family, and staff input should be considered when making these decisions. Some examples of conferencing structure include student-led, teacher-led, or clinic style. The utmost consideration should be given to structures that best help to facilitate two-way conversations so teachers and families can learn from each other. The school can share information about expectations for parent, guardian, or family participation 
and conferences and how families can make the best use of conference time. Information should be provided in multiple languages and through various avenues such as notes or newsletters, emails, online, and phone calls. School staff should work together to schedule interpreters as needed and ensure written materials are available in all necessary languages. It is never appropriate for children to act as interpreters for their families. It is our responsibility to ensure interpreters are available when needed. As a district, our conference participation goal for fall conferences is 100% of our students, including students who are making adequate progress. Our goal for spring conferences is 100% conference participation for all students who are not making adequate progress. Additional conferences can be scheduled as needed throughout the school year. Teachers should make every effort to engage parents ahead of time. Through their words and actions, teachers will help parents to understand how important conferencing can be to the success of their children and that their input is needed and valued. Here are a few things teachers can do. Start to invite parents two or three weeks before the conference window. Be sure to include complete information about when conferences will occur, how to schedule a conference, and alternative scheduling options. Schedule conferences in 20 to 30 minute time intervals and schedule longer intervals for those families who are likely to need more time. Provide both start and end times so parents will understand their time allotment and encourage them to be prompt. This will also help teachers to stay on schedule. Use more than one form of communication. Call, email, send flyers, use social media, and text parents to ensure they understand the importance of the conference and their participation is needed as part of their child's education team. Make phone calls and send reminder notes, emails, or texts the week of conference. It's a good idea to send reminders more than once. Make every effort to communicate in the parents' preferred language. Make sure parents know where they are supposed to go for their conference. This will help ensure they are on time and avoid the frustration of wandering around the campus looking for the right location. Both teachers and parents will want to make the best use of their conference time. It is important for teachers to prepare both their materials and the space ahead of time. Here are some suggestions to help in preparation. Review and gather recent classwork and student assignments, assessments, and behavior and attendance data. Prepare specific suggestions for activities parents can do at home to support progress. Any documents needing parent or guardian signatures should be sent home ahead of time. This will give families time to review and sign and allow conference time to be used for more meaningful conversation. Ask parents to bring the documents to the conference. You'll want to have some extra copies available in case they forget. Have sign-in sheets and conference surveys ready ahead of time. Prepare a space for families to wait for their turn this can be as simple as a few adult and child-sized chairs outside the classroom. If you want to go the extra mile, you can provide books, games, or activities, and information about resources and upcoming events, tips for homework, educational websites, and other information for families to explore while they wait. Make the classroom welcoming and comfortable for your families. Provide adult-sized chairs for parents and child-sized chairs for children. Be sure the room is well lit, clean, and presentable, and avoid fragrances that might be offensive to your guests. Even though most conferences are positive experiences, you, your students, or their families may still be a little nervous. Even if you have years of experience, you may still worry about bringing up an area of concern, or there may be a language barrier that makes communication more challenging. Parents may have had a bad experience with previous conferences, or even in their own schooling. They might be nervous about the language barrier or have concerns about their child's progress. Preparing for the conversation ahead of time will help things go smoothly. Think of ways to frame the conversation in a positive way and prepare to approach challenges in a problem-solving manner. Most importantly, you can be ready with words, actions, to help families feel welcome and valued as partners in their children's education so they will feel confident in sharing their insights and their ideas so you can learn from them. Here are a few things you can do to prepare for the conversation. Think about what you would like to learn about your students from their families. Prepare open-ended questions to encourage parents to share information, ideas, and perspectives. Think about questions parents might ask so you will be prepared with an answer. Try asking parents ahead of time about what they would like to talk about so you can be prepared to discuss those topics. You can send home a note or form for them to return 
conduct an online survey, or just ask them to email you with a few topics or questions. You can provide families with conference tips, ideas, and information to help them make good use of their allotted time. The atmosphere you create, how you frame the conversation, your words, and your actions are the key to creating a successful conference experience. Here are a few things to be mindful of when conferencing. Maintain a friendly atmosphere by being both open and professional. Frame the conversation in terms of strengths and challenges to help parents understand what the student is doing well and how he or she can improve. Maintain a two-way conversation. Ask questions. Be an active listener. And be aware of how you respond to questions, suggestions, or criticisms. Use language and vocabulary. Families will understand. You don't want to talk down to parents, but try to avoid teacher talk. Use data and student work samples to help parents understand what their child is expected to do at his or her grade level and how the child is progressing toward their goals. Use the schedule time for discussion. Paperwork and gathering of signatures can usually be accomplished in other ways. Suggest specific resources, activities, or strategies that parents can use or make available at home to support student learning. Honor everyone's time by staying on schedule. If you or the parent needs additional time, it's best to schedule a follow-up conference. Now that your conference is over, you'll want to work to maintain the relationships you have begun by continuing to work with parents as partners in their children's education. Here are some things to remember. At the end of every conference, provide conference feedback surveys and clear directions about where it will be collected. Be sure to provide a way to collect the survey anonymously, such as a Dropbox outside the classroom door or in the school's office, so parents will be comfortable in answering honestly. Seek out additional ways to meet with any parent or guardian who didn't conference during the scheduled time. You can reschedule or conduct a phone conference. You may decide to use FaceTime, try a home visit, meet at a library or coffee shop, go to the parent's place of work, or even meet at the laundromat. Be creative and think outside the box to find ways to connect with hard-to-reach families. Help them to understand that their participation is important and their insights are valuable. Be sure to follow up with families in reference to any questions or concerns that came up during the conference and follow through on any promised plans or actions. Follow up and follow through on your part will help to build trust and positive relationships. Continue to communicate progress with families between conferences. Conferencing is a valuable tool in communication with parents, but it is only one piece of the puzzle. Keep sending those newsletters and emails, making those calls, and returning calls and emails in a timely manner. Working together as a team, you and your students' families can build stronger students and increase student achievement. So let's summarize what was discussed. Successful conferences include preparation beforehand, mindfulness during, and follow-up afterward. Help families to understand how important their participation is to the success of their students. Engage them beforehand by sending invitations far enough in advance to allow them to plan. Providing opportunities to let you know what they would like to discuss and providing information to help them conference effectively. Prepare ahead of time to create opportunities for meaningful discussion and to make the best use of allotted time. Prepare your materials and space and plan for the discussion. Be a good host and make your guests comfortable. Use conference time to build partnerships with your families by maintaining two-way conversations, sharing information, learning from families as well. Follow up and follow through on any plans, questions, or commitments that come up during conference. For more information, please feel free to contact the TUSD Family and Community Outreach Department at 520 520- 225-3800. Contact your region's FACE supporting person directly or find additional resources as attachments to this module or in your site's Office 365 Family Engagement Team Files. Communication helps to build strong partnerships and strong partnerships are critical to student achievement. Together we can help strengthen families by giving them the tools they need to support and strengthen their students who will grow up to build a stronger community. Thank you for all that you do for our TUSD students and families. Bye.